What's good guys, this is Al B back with another video. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Keylab MK2 MIDI keyboard from Arturia. Now the Keylab MK2 or the Keylab Mark II is an upgraded, more premium version of the Keylab Essentials line of controllers that Arturia has. So what we're gonna do today is take a closer look at the different features and functionality, the different modes and all of the different options that you have with your Keylab Mark II keyboard. Before we get into it, be sure to hit that like button, be sure to hit that subscribe button so I can keep bringing you guys this good content. Without further ado, this is Al B. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. Now, who is Arturia? Arturia is a great manufacturer of both hardware and software synths. On the hardware side, they have the popular Matrix Brute and the Micro Brute synths. On the software side, they have popular VSTs like Pigments, Piano 5, and Analog Lab. Now, Piano 5 and Analog Lab actually come bundled when you purchase a Keylab Mark II keyboard. So that's a great value add that they throw in for you there. So let's talk about the physical build of the Keylab Mark II. The body is actually made of aluminum, so it's gonna feel really good and have some weight to it when you're moving it around or when you just are working with it. You can definitely tell that it has a quality build, and that's because the body and the key bed are based off of the Micro Brute and the Matrix Brute hardware sense that Arturia makes. So when you're using the Keylab Mark II, you're really gonna feel like you're using a real instrument, and it won't feel like a MIDI keyboard usually does where it feels all plasticky. And so that really helps when you're actually working inside of the studio to feel like you have some real quality professional equipment. Now you can get the Keylab Mark II in black or in white. Both versions will come with a nice wood grain panel on the side, which again just ups the aesthetic and makes you feel like you're working with a real instrument and it looks really nice in the studio as well. Now let's talk about some of the different features and functionalities on the keyboard itself. On the left hand side, the first thing you're going to notice is you have 16 pads that are RGB backlit pads. So you do have the option to change them to any color that you want them to be. You have three different modes as well. The first being your typical pad mode, which is going to function depending on how you have it mapped to your DAW or to whatever drum machine VST you might be using at the time. The other mode is going to be your chord mode where you can program one pad to actually trigger a chord. And this is useful if there are really complex chords, say that requires six fingers you can program that with a pad so you can play that chord with only touching the pad and it's also helpful if you don't have a great music theory background um, and you just want to be able to recall chords without having to think about it then that's also another great way to use the chord mode the third mode that you get with the pads is your chord transposition which just allows you to transpose the different chords as well so that's really nice to have the pads feel pretty good as well they're really responsive and the velocity curve seems to be pretty good out of the box you do have options inside of the midi control system Center to adjust and program your keyboard to do different things. And one of those things is you can change the velocity with MIDI Control Center. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. Moving on down the left hand side of the keyboard, you're gonna see the typical pitch wheel and modulation wheel. And then right above that, you're gonna see some buttons. You have your chord mode and transpose mode. So with the chord mode, you're gonna be able to do the same thing you did with the pad chord mode where you can take your keyboard and you can program a chord to be triggered by only pressing one key. And then when you have your transpose option, that's going to allow you to transpose the keyboard. So if you wanna play in a different key, but you don't know it, you can use transposition to make it where it's still all white keys, even though you may not be playing, you know, C major or A minor where you have all white keys. So it'll be useful for playing different keys and playing different scales when you don't know them by heart. Moving back up a little bit here, you have your global controls and your DAW controls, and these are going to behave differently depending on what DAW you're using. Um, so that's really just kind of dependent, and that's why the Keylab Mark II comes with those different face plates so that you can actually put whichever one on top that corresponds to your DAW, and you can see what those different buttons do for your DAW that you're using there specifically. Moving on down, you have your transport controls, which is typical. You have your rewind, your fast forward, your stop, play, pause, you know, your loop, enable and disable. So your typical transport controls are here as well. 
moving more into the center of the keyboard is where you're going to see a lot of the action happen when you're using this so right in the center you're going to notice this big knob it's a rotary knob so you can turn it to select different presets and things right beneath that you're going to see three buttons which are how you switch between the three major modes of the keyboard the first mode being the analog lab mode now analog lab mode is made specifically to integrate with Arturia's analog lab VST and the integration is really tight so you can navigate between the different presets and patches you can also control the most important functions of a certain synth or, or certain preset that you pick using the faders and the knobs on the right hand side of the keyboard and this integration is really nice and it gives you a lot of flexibility to modify the most important parts of a sound to really get the vibe you're looking for with that particular synth and so uh, the analog lab mode is a really great mode and with analog lab coming bundled when you buy the keyboard it's really just a great match the next mode that you have is doll mode and doll mode is where you're going to um, have the keyboard integrate with whatever doll you're using now the dolls that are supported today are studio one pro tools logic live and cubase and i think reaper as well the one that's missing from the bunch is FL Studio. For whatever reason, FL Studio doesn't often get enough love from these MIDI manufacturers, but I got good news for you. I actually have a custom template for use with the Keylab Mark II and FL Studio. I'm gonna put a card on the screen and I'm also gonna put a link in the description so you can check out that video if you're interested in a nice integration with FL Studio. The third and final mode is going to be user mode and user mode is where you can fully customize the keyboard and what the different buttons and functions do, what the different pads do, what the knobs and faders do, as well as the buttons below the faders. So you have a lot of flexibility there to what you can do. And the way that you do that is going to be using Arturia's MIDI control center. MIDI Control Center is the MIDI mapping and the MIDI template making software that Arturia makes for all of their MIDI controllers. It will be the same one that you would use for the Minilab MK2 or for the Keylab Essentials. Speaking of the Minilab MK2, if you also use the Minilab MK2 with FL Studio, I also have a custom template for that. I will also put that in the description and put a card on the screen if you want to integrate the Minilab MK2 with FL Studio. So I just briefly mentioned um, the knobs and the faders on the right hand side. Those are actually um, 27 in total because you have three different banks that you can switch between um, the buttons on the left hand side of the faders and the knobs or what you would use to switch between the different different banks and when you're in user mode you can have those things programmed to do almost anything inside of your DAW so it's really powerful customization that you can do there when it comes to inputs and outputs you of course have your MIDI in MIDI out you have CV in and CV out you have um, sustain and expression options for pedals as well as some aux input you do have the option to power this through USB if you're using this with a computer, but if you don't have a computer, you also have the option to power this through DC. And some of you might wonder, well, why would you not have a computer? We haven't talked about it yet, but the Keylab Mark II is also a very powerful MIDI controller that you can use with standalone hardware synths. So you don't actually have to have a computer to make use of this. If you have analog gear in your lab or other hardware in your lab that takes MIDI signal, you can do a lot of the controlling through your Keylab Mark Mark II. So that's a really powerful feature as well. So if you're a person that has um, a need for computer software as well as for physical hardware that you use in your studio, the Keylab Mark II is a great option to give you the functionality and give you the best of both worlds. Now, when it comes to other MIDI keyboards that I would consider to be comparable to the Keylab Mark II, there are two that come to mind. The first one is the Complete Control by Native Instruments. The big difference being that the Complete Control is designed to integrate with Native Instruments software, whereas the Keylab Mark II is designed to integrate with Arturia software. And there's no big surprise there, just your basic brand allegiance. The other keyboard that comes to mind is the Innovation SL Mark III. Now the SL Mark III is different in that it has its own built-in sequencer, something you won't find with the Keylab Mark II or with the complete control series either so that's a big difference there and that's a reason that the sl mark iii is a little bit more expensive than your keylab mark ii now let me give you my personal opinion about the keylab mark ii after having used it and worked with it for over three months 
The aluminum body build is excellent. It really feels like a quality instrument and not like you're just using a plastic toy, which is the feeling that you'll get from a lot of MIDI controllers. So this one has a lot more of a serious feel, a lot more of a quality build with that aluminum body. And that is not to be underestimated in how good it makes you feel when you're making music. The Analog Lab integration is also a big pro. Uh, the fact that it seamlessly integrates with Analog Lab is such a big positive because Analog Lab is a great VST that actually comes free when you purchase the Mark II. So it's a great value add by Arturia and definitely a big positive for the controller. The user modes are great as well. You have all this customization that you can do with the controller. The DAW integration is also excellent. The biggest thing there being it doesn't integrate with FL Studio outside of the box. Um, and so that's going to be a negative for some people. Another kind of con or negative would be that it's slightly expensive compared to some other controllers. Um, and especially when you compare it to the Keylab Essentials version, which is a more downgraded version. Obviously, you don't have the same number of pads. You don't have the same functionality that you get with the Mark II but the Mark II is literally two times as expensive as the Essentials. So if you're on a tight budget, you might want to consider looking at the Keylab Essentials versus the Keylab Mark II. Another thing that's kind of missing from the Mark II is a built-in sequencer. Now, I wouldn't consider that to be like expected or required for it to be a good controller, but when you compare it to something like the SL Mark III from Innovation, that is one feature that it's lacking. Um, while the SL Mark III costs $100 more, it is kind of, you know, something maybe our Arturia should consider or maybe something you should consider when you're looking at the two different keyboards. Overall, I do think that it's worth $499 um, if you have the budget for it. If you're on a tight budget, then the Keylab Essentials should give you uh, most of the same functionality minus some features like aftertouch and things like that. And so it's really a judgment call for you, but I don't think $499 is too expensive to pay for it. I have used several different MIDI keyboards. I've used Akai MIDI keyboards. I've used Innovation MIDI keyboards, and I've used all of them for an extensive amount of time each. And the Keylab Mark II is definitely panning out to be one of my favorite keyboards. So if you're interested in getting one, I'm gonna put a link in the description to where you can get it. I do get a small kickback, but it's no additional cost to you if that's what you decide to go with, okay? So without too much more talking, guys, that's really it. Um, this is Al B. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for me, and we are out. Yes, sir.